Um, welcome everybody and thank you for attending. Our goals today are to share tools available for businesses, multifamily housing, and for nonprofits that have commercial buildings to, um, to, do, to finance energy efficiency or renewable energy projects. And in many cases, these projects can pay for themselves. It's just a matter of knowing what programs might help. I'm Chris Meyer, and I'm the Southeast Regional Coordinator for the Clean Energy Resource Teams. And we're partnering with the City of Red Wing and the City of Northfield on this event today. Um, with us are some other representatives of CERTS, so maybe you could just wave. So Alyssa Polish is our statewide director. And uh, Maggie manages our events and she is running our technology today. And uh, Pete Lindstrom is one of our main speakers. Um, along with him, our main speakers are gonna be Jim Hasnick for the Center of Energy, for the, from the Center for Energy and the Environment. And Pete, he's from the Clean Energy Resource Teams. And also Mr. Bill Hanish, who's the owner of Hanish Bakery in Red Wing. I think it's appropriate that our logo looks like cupcakes. Um, Although I will say that we have pictures of Bill's cupcakes and they are much more appetizing than these. Um, Bill used some of these tools at his business. And so he's gonna share a little bit with us about his firsthand experiences. So the speaking part of our program is planned to last 45 minutes until about one o'clock. And then there's an optional 15 minute question and answer period after that. If you have questions as the presentations go along, could you please put them into the chat box and then we will address them during that 15 minute period at the end. So our hope is that you can share your lunch with us today and then you can get on with the rest of your work. Uh, Maggie, please advance the slide. So very briefly, I am representing the Clean Energy Resource Teams and we are a partnership organization that was created by the Minnesota legislature about 12 years ago and we have a mission to help communities that wanna do clean energy projects. We have seven regions across the state and uh, it's my job to connect with people in the Southeastern part. With us today is Melissa Bartman and Melissa is the Community and Economic Development Coordinator for the city of Red Wing and that she is, they are one of our partners today. So Melissa. Hi everyone, I'm Melissa Bartman with the city of Red Wing. I wanna welcome and thank you all for joining us today. Here in Red Wing, we adopted a climate action work plan in 2020 and have set the ambitious goal of reducing community-wide emissions 80% by 2040. The financing tools that are gonna to be discussed today can help building owners in our community access the financing needed to complete energy improvements that will help make their buildings healthier and more efficient and also support the city's progress in reaching its climate and energy goals. I wanna thank our speakers, Jim, Peter, and Bill for presenting today and Chris, Maggie, and Lissa for putting this all together. Thank you. Beautiful. So Beth Callistad, if you are still with us. Um, I am. You, thank you, would you, uh, uh, Maggie, please advance the slide. Thanks, there we go. Hello everyone, good afternoon. Sorry, um, life has gotten a little complicated for me today, so I'm, I'm joining on my phone. Um, I, I would echo everything Melissa has said, um, except the Northfield's Climate Action Plan was adopted in 2019, um, and our two goals are 100% uh, carbon-free electricity by 2030, and to be 100% carbon-free, carbon-neutral by 2040. So we both uh, both communities are working hard to achieve these goals, and we hope that sharing this information about financing will help members of our community to do the same. And thank you very much to CERTS and to all our speakers today. So with this, I think that we're ready to pass off the program to Mr. Jim Hasnick. Jim is the Director of Lending Services at the Center for Energy and the Environment. Um, so Maggie, we'll bring this up later when Bill's speaking this particular slide. So we could probably go to-, to That's um, a lot better slide than mine if you want to leave it there. It has food on it. <laughs> um, so the Center for Energy and the Environment is located in the Twin Cities and they are a 501c3 designated nonprofit organization. Since the 1980s, they have pursued uh, their mission through a variety of innovative offerings and initiatives directed at energy efficiency, research, education, financing, and implementation. Jim? Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so C, as, as you mentioned, we're a nonprofit, uh, 501c3. We're based in Minneapolis. Uh, we do have an office over in St. Paul as well. Um, and 
Maggie, do you want me to, are, are you gonna have me control or you want me to, you can go to the next slide, thanks. So we administer as an organization, we have about 160 employees. Um, my, our department, the lending department, we have a staff of 12. Um, we partner with Department of Commerce, Minnesota Housing, a lot of cities throughout the Metro. Um, Ramsey County, we do a community development block grant program <clears throat> and utilities as well. Um, Center Point Energy, we just rolled out an, an on-bill repayment program. Um, XL Energy, we um, do some different rebate programs and the commercial financing. And then Great River Energy, we've got some programs for geothermal heat pumps, um, air source heat pumps. A lot of our programs are, I'd say about 95% of our, our programs are for residential. Um, but we do have our commercial programs as well that we started about 15 years ago. Um, and a lot of these programs were tied into some of the other uh, things that we do as an organization. Uh, we do all of the home energy squad visits for Centerpoint Energy and Excel for residential. But for Excel, we do a, a small business lighting um, rebate or, or uh, analysis of properties, refrigeration and HVAC as well, which I'll go into in a little bit. Um, but tied to those, by doing those audits for these businesses, you know, people need the funding to actually follow through with those projects. So we do have with Department of Commerce, we came up with this 0% loan program for up to $25,000. And that is for businesses that go through one of our rebate uh, programs for lighting, refrigeration, and uh, HVAC. Um, and I'll, again, I'll go into that in a little bit of how you can get those audits done. They are free. Um, the nonprofit does have to own the property. They are tied to the property, the, the loans, um, and the payback has to be less than 10 years, which most of these, especially lighting and the controls and some of the HVAC and refrigeration typically are. Um, next slide, please. And then we do have also um, for nonprofit as well, um, up to $100,000 uh, we can go for programs and that would include solar, insulation, on top of the lighting, HVAC, refrigeration. We can also get windows into this program as well. Still has to be a 501c3. Um, there's no payback requirement on, on these programs or projects. And the rate is typically 3.9 or 5.99. We are, they might be changing soon, but it's gonna be very similar to this. Um, however, which I'll go to again, if, you, if it's a project that goes through one of these um, audits that we do uh, for lighting, HVAC, or refrigeration, Currently, the rate is, is can be as low as 1%, up to $100,000. Um, so that will continue for a while. And um, I'll go into that again in a little bit. Uh, next slide. And then for for-profits, or obviously not nonprofits, profits uh, very similar, up to $100,000 and go up to 10-year loan terms. Uh, the rates are, are anywhere from the 3.9 to 5.99%. Um, we do, if the loan is less than $50,000, all we require is a personal guarantor. If it's over $50,000, we do have to secure it to the property. Um, so the owner will need to be the one taking out the, the loan. Uh, this also does the refrigeration, HVAC, solar, insulation. Um, and just like the nonprofit, if someone goes through one of our rebate programs that we administer for Excel in the refrigeration, lighting, or HVAC, world, um, the rates are can go down to 1% up to a five year term. And next slide. Uh, so this is just kind of uh, some information on some of those audits I was talking about. So we have staff that would go out and actually do a free audit on the building. They, you can call, there's a phone number on here, you can call to see if your property or business would be eligible uh, for the audit. They would come out, work with you on what projects you do, kind of put together hey, if I do this, what would your payback be? What are the rebates? And help organize all of that for you. And if you have that done and go through that rebate program, that's where we can probably get that, that lower, even lower interest rate than it typically would be, which is already a low rate. Um, and that's, again, that 0% that or that 1% financing. And then the next slide just kind of goes into um, a little bit of the refrigeration assessments as well for businesses. And we do that for, for Excel also. Um, that's, I mean, I can go into the details on how to do the financing, but it is very straightforward, very simple. Um, we'd get an application out. If you've had the audit done, I would get a copy of the audit from our team. They would kind of provide, um, 
so I have the payback, what the cost would be. Uh, we would collect with the, the applicant, you know, verify that you know, the owner of the business, it would just be kind of a couple pages of tax returns showing the percentage of ownership, um, to verify that the business is registered to the Secretary of State. And that's really about it. It's pretty straightforward. Um, the, the payments are not put out part of the utility bill. So they are a separate payment that would come to CE, either auto pay or check. Um, but it is pretty straightforward and get it done, done very quick in a quick turnaround time. Um, I wish I had more, but that's really the basics of it. And I, I can uh, answer more questions later, obviously. So thank you. Fabulous. Thank you, um, Jim. Okay. So um, Peter Lindstrom is the manager of public sector and community engagement with the clean energy resource teams and the University of Minnesota's Regional Sustainable Development Partnerships and Extension. So I'm going to pass it off to Pete. Thank you, Chris and uh, Jim, great job. Uh, I am regularly um, encouraging folks to look into the CEE programs. What I wanted to talk about for the next few minutes is uh, property assess clean energy. Uh, ne next slide, Maggie. So property assess clean energy or PACE financing, it's a great way uh, to finance energy efficiency or renewable energy projects for businesses, for nonprofits, multifamily housing providers, really anybody except residential at this point can use property assessed clean energy. Uh, these, these projects are growing in popularity because uh, similar to, to Jim's uh, projects, uh, there's always a, an energy audit or regularly an energy audit component to these projects. So uh, auditor is going into the, the building and saying, hey, if you change out these LED lights, add insulation, put in some new um, energy efficient um, machinery, you'll save $10,000 on your energy bill, for example. The, the assessment uh, uh, for PACE will always be lower than what you'll save um, on an annual basis. So save $10,000 on your utility bill, uh, uh, have an $8,000 assessment, for example. Um, and so I should back up for a second. So that's, that's kind of the heart of PACE is that uh, the loan will be placed on uh, as an assessment on your on your property tax bill twice a year. Next slide, please. So, uh, so there's two public entities in Minnesota that administer the PACE program. First one is the Rural Minnesota Energy Board. Uh, these are 18 counties in the southwest part of the state. Uh, the eastern border is uh, Renville, um, Blue Earth, Nicollet counties, Freeborn counties, so um, may impact some of you. Uh, so that's the Rural Minnesota Energy Board. They have their own PACE program for entities within those 18 counties. And the second public entity is the St. Paul Port Authority, and they operate a PACE program called MinPACE, uh, which is available almost throughout the rest of the state. And good job, Southeast Minnesota. It is available throughout the entirety of uh, Southeast Minnesota. So that's great. The blue dots uh, here on this, on this slide are um, projects completed through MinPACE, and then the yellow dots are projects completed through the Rural Minnesota Energy Board and as I mentioned, it is growing in popularity just in the last oh five years or so. There's been about 300 projects or more completed across the state. Next slide. Next slide, please, Maggie. All right, here we go. So let's talk about PACE a little bit further. So as I mentioned, about 300 projects completed. 
a lot of projects, a lot of uh, large projects, 125 million worth of project costs, uh, 500 billion worth of BTUs saved. And if, if you're like me, you're kind of scratching your head like, Cal, what, is, what does that mean? That is the equivalent of Red Wing, uh, what Red Wing uses on an annual basis for electricity, 16,000, uh, what 16,000, actually 16,000 homes. So it's probably a little bit more than what, what Red Wing uh, uh, utilizes. And it's a, it can be a great job creator. Um, you think about uh, these projects, um, not only is it helping that business uh, save money on their utility bill, but it's likely that that business is hiring someone from, uh, from the region to get the project completed. Next slide. So there's a few uh, commonalities, whether you're talking about the Rural Minnesota Energy Board uh, PACE program or the St. Paul Port Authority's PACE program. And, and that is that uh, uh, the business uh, can't be in bankruptcy. They have to be up on their uh, state, federal, uh, local taxes. Uh, and um, there's a cap that the, the business can receive and that's 20% of the assessed value. What the county says is the assessed value, 20% is the maximum that that business, that nonprofit, uh, that faith community, whatever it might be, can receive. Next slide. So a little bit about the project process. First of all, uh, the local government, uh, and, and typically it's the county, uh, has to establish pace. Um, and like I mentioned, uh, Every county um, in the Southeast region has PACE in place, so that's great. There's a short online application. It's maybe six pages long, um, pretty, pretty much name, rank, serial number information. As I mentioned, there is an energy audit component to this that's completed. Uh, and you do need to get lender consent um, if you're participating in the PACE, PACE program. Uh, it's simply a sign off from the mortgage holder if there is a mortgage. You submit it uh, online and uh, get an answer uh, shortly on whether or not you're you're approved or not. And typically you are, are. You can hire whoever you wish to get the project completed and you're off and running. Next slide, please. But why, why PACE in the first place? First of all, uh, obviously that utility bill is uh, uh, tough to swallow on a monthly basis for your, your business. One unique aspect of PACE is that you save now when, you're, when you uh, get the, those energy conservation measures implemented or that solar array up on the roof. You don't have to pay until the following year. So you get the project completed in January, 2021. You don't make your first payment until May of 2022. So you have all of these savings uh, along the way to help make that first um, th that first payment. So these are cash flow positive projects for businesses. Next slide. Just covering a, a couple of uh, case studies. This is the Blue Line Travel Center down in Worthington, and uh, so, uh, you can see they have a ton of lighting, uh, exterior lighting, big gas canopy. They did a $74,000 PACE project a few years ago. And what I wanna point out here is that, so they used the RMEBs, the Rural Minnesota Energy Board's PACE program, took advantage of their local utilities rebates, which we always encourage people to, to uh, uh, contact their local utility first and foremost. But then they also took advantage of a grant program called uh, REAP or Rural uh, Energy for America program, REAP, from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. And REAP, great grant, pro, and it's a grant, not a loan, straight out cash from Uncle Sam. Uh, up to 25% of the project costs can be paid for through REAP. And this is available uh, throughout Southeast uh, Minnesota. 
So for this project, uh, you can see cash flow positive, uh, annual savings of $14,000, the assessment far below that at uh, $9,000. These, these business owners were, were so pleased, they went out and got a second PACE loan for lighting uh, on the interior of the travel center. Next slide, please. Also in the south, south southern part of the state, the Parkwood Place, and this is an old county hospital that's been converted to multifamily, a large energy efficiency project, uh, 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 tons of things that they did with, um, with this apartment complex. And uh, again, this was a rural Minnesota Energy Board program, took advantage of local uh, rebates as well as uh, received a REAP grant as well. And you can see, again, cash flow positive, uh, annual savings to close to 10 grand with assessments uh, just shy of nine grand. Next slide. I want to uh, call out uh, that PACE has typically been used for existing buildings, but there was a legislative change a year or so ago that has really opened the door for new construction. So I've mentioned that, uh, that, uh, that PACE uses um, that the maximum is 20% of the assessed value. The legislature made a change. They said, you can still use 20% of the assessed value or 20% of the appraised value. So that's important because uh, you can use 20% of the appraised value of a, of a future building. So, uh, so in Rochester, in your neck of the woods, close to your neck of the woods. There's been, I believe, three hotels that have used PACE, uh, utilized three brand new hotels. This one, the Hyatt House, uh, just, just two, three blocks from, um, from Mayo, great project. Uh, over $4 million worth of um, PACE funds for really high efficiency measures within this hotel. Next slide, please. So PACE is great for you know, large new construction, even skyscrapers. The first national bank building in downtown St. Paul uh, has used PACE, but Paul's handyman service, I imagine it's just Paul in Red Wing, uh, you, uh, put in a, a 10 kW solar um, array on, on top of his shop and uh, utilize the St. Paul Port Authority's program, Excel uh, incentives, and the, of course, the federal tax credit, uh, 26%. Um, and what I like, uh, I really like this quote from Paul. You know, uh, it's not a really um, difficult uh, application process. Um, he says, yeah, it's pretty easy. Sent in an application and they approved it in about, about a month. Honestly, pretty seamless. Next slide, please. Uh, farms, definitely one of the niches for PACE is uh, 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 farms. And so this this uh, family farm, the Peterson family farm, put in a, a 40 kW solar array a few years back and uh, uh, got a REAP grant as well. And, and you can see quarter of a million dollars uh, savings over the lifetime of this solar array. Uh, pretty significant for this family farm. Next slide. Again, a, a hotel, uh, another solar project, and uh, another another 40 kW um, project. I like this quote from this business owner, the way I see it, anything you can do to be green and reduce costs is a great benefit for a business. Next slide. That's, that's it for me. Uh, uh, if you're uh, looking for more info on PACE, um, please contact me or REAP the grant. But I included my colleague Fritz, who's really our, our true uh, REAP grant expert, uh, for his contact information as well. And I just while I'll wrap up by saying I know there's a lot of local government folks on this call as well. And so I encourage you to be thinking about ways to get the message out uh, in your region. And um, just give me a holler. I will uh, show up in person when we can do that or virtually. Uh, to at a Chamber of Commerce event or whatever it might be to help get the message out. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Pete. That was awesome. And uh, I'll just say that personally, I'm excited because 
we're on time and that doesn't happen often. <laughs> so I love it. You'll all get back to your jobs uh, on time. Um, Maggie, do you think you could find Bill Hanish's slide again? Um, and so Bill is the owner of the Hanish Bakery. Um, Melissa Bart uh, Bartman from Red Wing was showing us earlier that she had a box of uh, Valentine cookies that were gorgeous, she made us all hungry. Um, and Bill used uh, the Property Assessed Clean Energy Program on his business, and he is going to share some of his firsthand experiences about that. So, Bill, please take it away. Yeah, um, I uh, kind of learned about it from uh, property across the street from me, uh, the uh, Cardinal Building, and uh, I kind of picked his brain at it and thought, well, why not look into it? And um, it really is a simple process. I mean, you know, we worked with um, one, you know, one solar group and the only little hitch I had is the guy that was installing it got into a divorce and he disappeared to Arizona. Um, so we had, we had to find a new installer, but um, you know, we got the, we got it in. We're now into our second full year. Uh, our first year, we, we produced uh, 17 and a half, I think that's that megawatts an hour or something like that. I'm not an electrician. <laughs> and then uh, this last year we actually increased because we didn't have a, a February where there was 90 inches of snow. Um, so we actually produced uh, 20 megawatts of, of power uh, this year. So we, we've seen a nice increase. Uh, we also got involved with the XL Solar Rewards Program. So we get a an extra rebate check on top of the savings we're already seeing. And uh, over the years, though, I've also went to all LED lights. I've used the different rebate programs. So we have all LED lights here at the bakery. Um, I will probably someday be hearing from me about uh, upgrading refrigeration here because it's from like back when they used to make ice cubes, I think from the lake. Um, so that's one thing we'll be working on here, but the solar awards has been great. Um, you know, we see a very nice reduction in our electricity bill each month, but then, uh, you know, to get, like I said, to get that rebate on top of it. And, uh, you know, it just goes on to our property taxes. And, you know, it was, it was, it was a very simple process that, you know, I just looked at it went through all the numbers and went, I don't know why anybody won't want to do this. Um, the return on the investment is very quick. And, uh, you know, I kind of, I like to look down whenever I have talked over at the seminary plaza is the only time I can see my roof. Uh, it's kind of cool though, to look down and see your roof covered in solar panels. It's, it's definitely a, a good feeling to have and know you're doing something right. So I don't, I don't know what else there's to add to it. Um, you know, like I said, it, it was a very simple process. And, you know, the upfront costs, some people might, I mean, we went through the PACE program, so there was essentially nothing really out of pocket. Um, it was, it was great. It was, it was, uh, it was, it was, a, it was a good experience, uh, except for the guy that had to go through a divorce. Unfortunately, I think he's putting solar panels somewhere in Arizona, I think. <laughs> but but we got her all hooked up and it's running great. Hey, Bill, so, oh, so Chris has a question here about how long ago did you install the solar array? Was it two years? Two years now we've been on it. Yeah, it was, uh, it got hooked up at the end of 2018. It, sh it should have been hooked up at the beginning of 2018. <laughs> but yeah, there was, <laughs> there was a six month um, gap there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, for two years, it's been running great. I love that I can, monitor everything from my cell phone so if there's any issues i can just go to my uh my solar edge app that i have on my phone and i can just i can see exactly how we're producing um you know how much you know it's kind of cool it tells you you know we've saved 480 trees and we've saved 63,562 pounds of co2 emissions so that's kind of a cool little thing at the bottom of the app. It tells us, um, you know, how much we've we've saved on certain things. So that's it's always cool to see see what how it's producing. Yeah, and 
I was going to ask you, Bill, just briefly. So Pete shared that slide um, where the, there's a quote from Paul about the application process. Can yeah. you just describe a little bit for folks what the PACE application process was like? A lot of paperwork that I gave to my bookkeeper. <laughs> uh, you, you know, it's just it's coming up with your tax returns, um, you know, coming up with, you know, other financial documents, but fairly simple. I mean, it, it wasn't. It wasn't like you had to dig up 10 years of, of everything and, and present that, you, you know, you just had to, you know, show you're up to date on the things, basically everything he covered. I was like, well, he kind of took what I was going to talk about, but, uh, you know, it, it was, it was, it was really simple. We got it approved pretty quickly. And, um, you know, I, I and got into the Excel solar rewards program, which was a nice bonus on top of uh, what you're already saving you know and that's great and and obviously the uh the tax break the first year was very nice i should also quickly note that uh there is an interest rate of course on the pace loan it's it's uh typically four and a quarter percent and the term is 10 years fixed it's four and a quarter 10 year fixed it can and be then, up to 20 years and that solar rewards though goes for 10 years, you know, so that's typically, I mean, you looked at these, the savings you were getting from that. I mean, that's going to be probably a $2,000 rebate check this year. So that'll, that usually helps out quite a bit. Okay, I'm tracking some other questions. Um, and there are federal tax credits currently available. They're at 26% right now, and that was just recently extended. Um, I will grab a link to put in the chat in just a second. Um, there's a, a website called the Database of State Incentives for Renewable Energy. That is dsireusa.org. It's called Desire, but you should be careful when you put that into a web browser. So I'll put the actual link in. Um, because it includes lots of information about the different incentives that are available, including to Nancy's earlier question about utility rebates, as well as the sort of federal tax incentives and things like that. So it can be a good starting point if you're trying to understand what those options are. But of course, we always encourage you to actually reach out to your utility directly. Um, what other questions might folks have? You're also welcome to unmute yourself and just ask your question. Well, while we're waiting for people to, to pipe up, um, Jim, let me just ask a quick question. So you were describing the programs and you were describing how they're connected mostly to the Excel rebate programs, and I think folks within sort of Red Wing and Northfield are often in that Excel territory. How how do your programs work if it's not connected to Excel? Can, the financing is still available, or will you say a little yeah. bit more about that? Yeah, the programs are they're statewide, um, but due to the rebates and the programs, we can get a lower interest rate for the Excel rebate programs that we're administering. Um, so that's where that zero and 1% kind of come in. Um, outside of Excel, if it's not through one of the rebate programs, then it's basically the rates are going to be between, actually it'll be, they're changing between like 3.75 and um, like 6% is what it's going to be, um, depending on the ter term and if it's secured or not. So, so they are statewide. It's just that we get a better rate if it's using the rebate. And when someone gets an audit, is it, I mean, do they get all of the, like, do they get just lighting or do they get lighting and HVAC or how does that part work? Can you talk people through that and how they yes. request um, a different thing? They're separate audits. Um, so it would be a different team or a different person coming out for each one. Um, when they, we could see, they can find out which ones the, the property would be eligible for by usage. So they kind of go to the Excel records and just see what, based on usage, which rebates they'd be eligible for. And then they would, it would be a separate audit for each refrigeration, HVAC and lighting, depending on what they're looking at doing. And, and those are free. Once they call and say, yep, you're qualified, the, the, the property is qualified, 
those audits don't cost anything. All right, you all have to speak up because I can just keep going. Um, okay, but you said they were for nonprofits and um, for profit, but how does that work? Um, you know, like how, how does that vary? Is it also like faith communities? What about jurisdictions? I know we have some jurisdictions, like how do, how do those vary? Yeah. And then yeah, we'll go so to that. The yeah. non, on the nonprofit side, that is um, the 0% is a different kind of pool of money that we work with Department of Commerce on. As long as it's a 501c3, honestly, they're eligible. Um, and most, eh, I'd say probably 90% of the ones we've done have been to kind of faith-based nonprofits. Um, handful or not, but most have been. And then the for-profits are, are as long as the business is registered in the, the state, they're, they're eligible, so. Yeah. Awesome. Beth, go ahead with your question. Thank you. Um, so uh, one question is with the CEE um, offerings, if you've had an, an energy audit done recently through another entity, can that be used or do you do another one? And then our cities, and I apologize if you said this and I missed it in the slides, um, our cities, since we're nonprofit-ish, um, do we fall under that category? Um, so on the city side, I don't think they're a 501c3. Peter, I, no. I don't think they are. So it has to be a 501c3 to get that 0% with the commerce. So that's one part to that. But we can still do lending. We have done some, um, like some lending to cities for like parking ramps, for lighting projects. Um, so we have done that, just not at the 0%. Um, and then the, oh shoot, what was the second? The, the first part of your question? Um, if we've already had an audit okay. done recently. Mm -hmm. um, on the audit, you can use, if it's not Excel, we actually don't even need an audit if it's not Excel. Where the audit comes into, into place is if it's an Excel project or rebate project, that's where we would need their audit. Even if it was an older one, we could use it. Um, but we have to be use their rebate to get that zero or one percent. If it's not an Excel rebate or audit, um, we can still do the project. It doesn't matter who the audit is from. You don't even actually need one. Um, and that would be where the rates would be between that 3.75 and 6%, basically. Um, so we have another question here about how it would work for an older bil building that's being acquired and then we'll need to go through a pretty major HVAC upgrade. So like at what point in the process would they engage with you? How does that work in terms of, right, the ownership status and all of that? Maybe you could walk through that. Me or Pete? <laughs> you sorry, sorry. Jim. yeah Maybe, why don't you start um, and then pete you can add in for further details yeah i i would direct you to our um team that does the audits you know if you want to give me a call and i'll get you to the right person or email um if it's being acquired i i, I believe the current the current well the current owner would be the ones that would have to ask for the audit or have that done they could certainly do that and then you could use that once the the building transfers ownership um, so, but I, but the, the current owner would have to be involved or whoever is on the utility bill, um, to request that audit would have to be involved in, in getting that done before the purchase. Does that help at all? <laughs> I could see Charles nodding. Pete, yeah. anything you wanted to add? Sure. In terms of audits, uh, first and foremost, I've found that the St. Paul Port Authority is pretty flexible, flexible in terms of what they consider an audit. So even a, a quote from a contractor may fit the bill for what, what is good enough uh, for an audit. Uh, always contact your utility, um, as we've mentioned a couple of times, to see if they provide that service. And then there's a, a program called RETAP, Retired Environmental Technical Assistance Program, uh, which is a state program which provides free audits. Uh, to small businesses and local governments across the state. Retap. Melissa, anything else that you were hoping that to just sort of reinforce or emphasize from your perspective in Red Wing? Not that I can think of. These guys did a great job covering it all. <laughs> And 
And Chris, any other questions that you had that you were thinking? Yeah, go ahead. I was hoping that Pete could tell us a little bit more about the many things that Fritz does for us because there's a really awesome set of services that he provides that Pete didn't tell about. Clear your calendars, everybody, because our colleague Fritz does a lot of really cool stuff. But <laughs> no, uh, uh, well, one thing besides being our um, REAP Rural uh, Energy for America program expert, he's really our go to guy for all things uh, energy efficiency, renewable energy for, um, for greater Minnesota particularly solar, he has a, a deep level of expertise. So if you're thinking about solar, but you're not quite sure if your roof is a good spot or, or if you have enough sunshine um, or how the financing all works, uh, Fritz, Fritz is uh, definitely a go-to guy. And he, in fact, can do either virtual or some, or when it's appropriate, on-site solar site assessments. So heading down to, to your your business and uh, checking it out with you when the time is right for that. What did I miss, Chris? Is that, uh, is that what you had in mind? Yeah, he's, he's fabulous and he, he can do site assessments and I, um, he's a great resource. And he, he recently, as Beth can attest to, he's been helpful when municipalities have certain questions um, about solar related to utilities. He's been, yeah. So, I, I mean, I guess in general, I would say um, as the regional coordinator and depending on where it is that you live to reach out to the certs coordinator, um, it's not our job to know the answer. It's our job to maybe have an idea of who might be available at the University of Minnesota, at the state or other, you know, programs that are available that could be helpful. So. That's our, that's my, I see that as my job is uh, help connect you with resources. Um, so one of our um, participants asked with climate change as the stated priority of the new administration, what changes or new programs are you expecting or hoping to see? I don't know if any of you wanna jump in and respond to that. If we have some specific things. Jim, go ahead. Um, well, with, with, this in place, we started uh, or see start conversations with some organizations about um, setting up a green bank in Minnesota. Um, so that is now moving forward and talks and what that would work. I mean, there, there's a lot that has to happen, obviously, with legislation before that happens. But um, I, what that would entail, I know a lot of it is, is a green bank would basically bring a lot more capital. I mean, there are, Minnesota already has a lot of great programs um, on the residential side with Minnesota housing and commerce and city programs, neighborhood programs, county. Um, so a lot of that would be focused on commercial. Um, I know transportation would be a big piece. Um, some residential and trying to get some of the um, solar maybe involved with more more equ equitable, you know, making it more affordable for, for households. So that's something I, I don't have any details on it other than that's a piece of the puzzle and Minnesota would be uh, looking to, to create that when I don't know, but it, it's in discussions. Yeah, I mean, I think some of those financing tools are just really, important for folks. Um, and I think increasingly people are thinking about and how do we make different financing tools available to different for different needs, you know, be it for um, weatherization and more access for low income or more access for agriculture or small businesses, right? Or like, or government. So I think that's really, um, I think that those opportunities are things that can help with that investment. I think infrastructure related things about energy are also something that people are anticipating, though I don't have any specifics on that. Go ahead, Jim, if you were going to add something else. No, I, I was just going to say, yeah, and a big piece is, you know, with that is there are so many other programs is also to make sure that there aren't things being done that are already here, um, you know, adding to what we already have and making things better or, or what's not being addressed. So. Absolutely. And I think I would just 
reiterate um, Chris's comment that it is always nice to connect with our regional coordinators who can then help you kind of navigate that because the, they're trying to track all of those different things. Um, Jeff, it looked like you were going to, Jeff Gobi, you were going to ask a question. Go ahead if you wanted to. Oh, no, I, I just joined the meeting. Sorry, it was very late. No question here. <laughs> Not to worry, and we will be sending out slides and a recording, so you can always get into that. Um, we're in that sort of Q&A part of the agenda, so people sort of asking questions about the financing tools. Any other questions from folks? Okay. We are greatly appreciative to all of you for joining us. And thanks so much for Chris, all of your work pulling it together with Melissa and Beth. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Peter. And three cheers for Bill, for all of your great work telling your story and for, of course, all of the fantastic baked goods that you make. Uh, I imagine there will be road trips to come and see it. Um, for any of you at any time, um, if you have questions, please simply let us know. Um, Chris's contact information is there, Pete shared contact, Jim shared contact. All of our contact information is always on our shirts website and it is indeed our job to help you move your projects forward and we would be delighted to do so. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you all being here. And we'd love to great you afternoon. Talk, so please feel free to fill out that evaluation survey in the chat. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. yep. Thanks everyone. Thanks. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks everyone. You guys, that was great. Yeah. Thanks.